वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग डियर चिल्ड्रन जय स्वामीनारायण वेलकम बैक टू आत्मीय ग्रीन स्कूल चाडेश्वर ब्रांच सो दिस इज योर इंग्लिश क्लास एंड वी हैड कंप्लीटेड विद द लेसन अ डे इन द कंट्री सो लेट्स बिगिन विद द एक्सरसाइजेस व्हिच इज गिवन इन योर टेक्स्ट बुक ओके सो विल बिगिन विद द स्टार्टअप दैट इज गिवन ऑन पेज नंबर थर्टी एट here you have to list five lessons that you have learned from nature now here i have given you five lessons which has be learned from the nature you can write in your own words the first one skill of observation second one witnessing the vastness of the world third one appreciation for the beauties of nature fourth one taking pleasure in simplicity and fifth one is inspiration okay so you can write in your own words the five lessons which you have learned from nature now let's begin with the exercises which is given on page pages 44 and 45 The first question is why was Fiocla looking for Terenti So the answer is Fiocla was looking for Terenti as her brother had met with an accident Okay or you can write Fiocla was looking for Terenti as her brother had an accident Okay now the next one why did the little girl come looking for Terenti The little girl came looking for Terenti because he was kind and helpful Now the next one why was Terenti respected Terenti was respected because he was knowledgeable so these are the mcq questions children so you can put a tick against the correct option in the book okay now the next one what was the effect of the change of weather on the following okay so the first question they have given is the sky so what was the effect of the change of weather on the sky the sky went dark as the sun was covered by the clouds not a speck of blue was seen in the sky okay so this is the answer for the question the sky now the next one is the grass and trees the grass and the trees were washed by the rain and the leaves looked fresher and greener next one is the people of the village the people ran to their huts to shelter themselves from the coming storm now the next one is what happened to danilka what caused the accident how did terenti help him so the answer is danilka had stuck his hand in a hole in a lime tree and he could not pull his hand out danilka's desire to get a cuckoo's egg from inside the hole led to the accident Terenti helped him by snapping off the broken piece of wood from the edge of the hole and pulling out Danilka's hand. So I'm repeating the answer again. Danilka had stuck his hand in a hole in a lime tree and he could not pull his hand out. Danilka's desire to get a cuckoo's egg from inside the hole led to the accident. Terenti helped him by snapping off the broken piece of wood from the edge 
of the hole and pulling out Danilka's hand. Now we'll go to the next question. What had Terenti learnt about the ants and the bees? Terenti tells the children that the ants would not build their home on low ground again. They have learnt to be cautious of the rain. Terenti also tells them that throwing water on a flying swamp of bees makes them settle. To take a swamp of bees, the branch must be gently bent inside an open sack. So this is what Terenti tries to tell the children. Okay, I'll repeat the answer again. Terenti tells the children that the ants would not build their home on low ground again. They have learned to be cautious of the rain. Terenti also tells them that throwing water on a flying swamp of bees makes them settle. To take a swamp of bees, the branch must be uh, gently bent inside an open sack. Okay, now... Danilka looks at Terenti and greedily drinks in every word. Okay, what is Danilka's mood here? Danilka is keen to learn more about nature from Terenti. So what do you understand from the uh, line over there which is given? What is Danilka's mood here? Danilka is keen to learn about more about the nature from Terenti. Where were they? They were walking aimlessly through the fields towards the river. So, where was Danilka and Terenti and uh, Fiocla? They were walking aimlessly through the fields towards the river. What was Terenti telling him? Terenti talked about the beauty of the earth, the wonders of the various creatures living in it and all that he had learnt from his experiences with nature. Okay, I'll repeat the answer. Terenti talked about the beauty of the earth, the wonders of various creatures living in it and all that he had learnt from his experiences with nature. Now, describe the change in Fiocla's mood in the story. At the beginning of the story, Fiocla was eager to save uh, her brother and rushed to find Terenti. They crossed muddy fields in the rain to help him. Afterwards, she was tired and could barely keep up with Danilka and Terenti. She fell asleep while Danilka thought of the wonderful things he had seen and learnt that day. I'll repeat the answer. Uh, describe the change in Fiocla's mood in this story. The answer is... At the beginning of the story, Fiocla was eager to save her brother and rushed to find Terenti. They crossed muddy fields in the rain to help him. Afterwards, she was tired and could barely keep up with Danilka and Terenti. She fell asleep while Danilka thought of the wonderful things he had seen and learnt that day. Now the next one. The story reflects Terenti's love for the children. Give three reasons to prove this. Terenti looked lovingly at Fiocla when she came to him asking for help. He was gentle and tender with her. As soon as he heard of Danilka's predicament, he rushed to help him out of danger. Terenti also did not mind answering the questions that Danilka had and patiently explained all that he knew to them. At night, he put breads under their heads. This proves his love for the children. Again, I'll repeat the answer. Terenti looked lovingly at Fiocla while when she came to him asking for help. He was gentle and tender with her. As soon as he heard of Danilka's predicament, he rushed to help him out of danger. Terenti also did not mind answering the questions that Danilka had and patiently explained all that he knew to them. At night, he, pulled, he put breads under their heads. This proves his love for the children. 
Now the next question: The children were impoverished but joyful. Justify this statement. The children slept in a barn where the community kept their corn. The day's adventures tell us that they led a joyful life. Both Fiocla and Danilka enjoyed spending time with nature, learning about the ants, bees, and the nightingale. I'll repeat the answer. The children slept in a barn where the community kept their root, their corn. The day's adventures tell us that they had led a joyful life. Both Fiocla and Danilka enjoyed spending time with nature, learning about the ants, bees, and the nightingale. Now let's do the exercise which is given on pages forty-five and forty-six. Now the first one is describe the setting of this twentieth-century Russian village. The story is set in a quaint Russian village where the people live in huts. They work. in the kitchen gardens and vegetable plots and till the fields there is a community barn where they store their corn the children like running through the fields of grass and watch the good streams which passes by the village it is a place of beauty and serenity i'll repeat the answer again we have to describe the setting of this 20th century russian village the story is set in a quaint russian village where the people live in huts they work in the kitchen garden and vegetable plots and till the fields there is a community barn where they store their corn the children like running through the fields of the grass and watch the good stream which passes by the village it is a place of beauty and serenity Now the next question is Terenti was unschooled but nature had been his greatest teacher what lessons had Terenti learned from nature now Terenti had learned a lot from his daily experiences with nature he tried to teach the children all that he knew he told them thunder was caused by the friction of clouds a singing bird's nest should never be disturbed the ant should be the ant would search for higher ground after the rain washes away their ant hill he also taught them that a swamp of bees could be settled by water and a sting of a spanish fly can cause swelling he knew the herbs which cure diseases and could tell the weather from the skies okay i'll repeat the answer again terenti had learned a lot from his daily experiences with nature he tried to teach the children all that he knew he told them thunder was caused by the friction of the clouds a singing bird's nest should never be disturbed uh, the ants would search for higher ground after the rain washes away their ant hill he also taught them that a swamp of bees could be settled by water and that a sting of spanish fly can cause swelling he knew the herbs with cure uh, which cured diseases and could tell the weather from the skies okay now you have to justify each of these traits when terenti now the first uh, word which has they have given the trait which uh, they have given is frail the evidence for the same is on his long crane like legs he sways in the wind like a starling coat okay now next one is agile it is slippery and difficult to walk but terenti strides on more and more rapidly helpful he helped pull out danilka's hand from the tree so this proves that he is having a helpful nature then persevering the cobbler and the boy walk about the fields talk unceasingly and are not weary okay now the next one is observant looking at the sunset at the moon or the birds he can tell what sort of weather it will be the next day so that means he was very observant he was having this uh, trait in him okay knowledgeable 
how do we, how do we come to know that he was knowledgeable uh, he knows that what herbs cure diseases he has no difficulty in telling the age of a horse or a cow okay now here children you can see the answers given over here uh, these are the questions uh, answers based on the questions which has been given on page number 46 on vocabulary okay. a day in the country by anton chekhov between 8 and 9 o'clock in the morning a dark leaden colored mass is creeping over the sky towards the sun red zigzags of lightning gleam here and there across it there is a sound of far away rumbling a warm wind frolics over the grass bends the trees and stirs up the dust in a minute there will be a spurt of may rain and a real storm will begin fiocla a little beggar girl of 6 is running through the village looking for torrenti the cobbler the white-haired barefoot child is pale her eyes are wide open her lips are trembling uncle where is torrenti she asks everyone she meets no one answers they are all preoccupied with the approaching storm and take refuge in their huts at last she meets silanti silich the sacristan torrenti's bosom friend he is coming along staggering from the wind uncle where is torrenti at the kitchen gardens answers silanti the beggar girl runs behind the huts to the kitchen gardens and there finds torrenti the tall old man with a thin pock-marked face very long legs and bare feet dressed in a woman's tattered jacket is standing near the vegetable plots looking with drowsy drunken eyes at the dark storm cloud on his long crane-like legs he sways in the wind like a starling coat uncle torrenti the white-headed beggar girl addresses him uncle darling torrenti bends down to fiocla and his grim drunken face is overspread with a smile such as come into people's faces when they look at something little foolish and absurd but warmly loved ah servant of god fiocla he says lisping tenderly where have you come from uncle torrenti says fiocla with a sob tugging at the lapel of the cobbler's coat brother danilka has had an accident come along what sort of accident oh, what thunder holy 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 what sort of accident in the count's copse danilka stuck his hand into a hole in a tree and he can't get it out come along uncle do be kind and pull his hand out how was it he put his hand in what for he wanted to get a cuckoo's egg out of the hole for me the day has hardly begun and already you are in trouble torrenti shook his head and spat deliberately well what am i to do with you now I must come I must may the wolf gobble you up you naughty children come little orphan Torrenti comes out of the kitchen garden and lifting high his long legs begins striding down the village street he walks quickly without stopping or looking from side to side as though he were shoved from behind or afraid of pursuit Fiocla can hardly keep up with him they come out of the village and turn along the dusty road towards the count's copse that lies dark blue in the distance It's about a mile and a half away. The clouds have by now covered the sun, and soon afterwards there is not a speck of blue left in the sky. It grows dark. Holy, holy, holy! Whispers Fiocla, hurrying after Torrenti. The first raindrops, big and heavy, lie dark dots on the dusty road. A big drop falls on Fiocla's cheek, and glides like a tear down her chin. Between eight and nine o'clock in the morning, a dark, leaden-colored mass is creeping over the sky towards the sun. Red zigzags of lightning gleam here and there across it. There is a sound of far-away rumbling. A warm wind frolics over the grass, bends the trees, and stirs up the dust. In a minute, there will be a spurt of May rain, and a real storm will begin. Fiocla, a little girl of six. is running through the village looking for Terenti the cobbler the white-haired barefoot child is pale her eyes are wide open her lips are trembling uncle where is terenti she asks everyone she meets no one answers they are all preoccupied with the approaching storm and take refuge in their huts at last she meets silanti silich 
the sacristan, Terenti's friend. He is coming along, staggering from the wind. Uncle, where is Terenti? At the kitchen gardens, answers Silanti. The girl runs behind the huts to the kitchen gardens and there finds Terenti. The tall old man with a thin, pockmarked face, very long legs and bare feet, dressed in a woman's tattered jacket, standing near the vegetable plots, looking with drowsy eyes at the dark storm cloud. On his long, train-like legs, he sways in the wind like a starling coat. Uncle Terenti! The white-headed girl addresses him. Uncle darling! Terenti bends down to Fiocla, and his grim face is overspread with a smile, such as come into people's faces when they look at something little, foolish and absurd, but warmly loved. Ah, Fiocla! He says tenderly, Where have you come from? Uncle Terenti? Says Fiocla, with a sob, tugging at the lapel of the cobbler's coat. Brother Danilka has had an accident. Come along. Oh, what sort of accident? Oh, what thunder! Holy, holy, holy! What sort of accident? In the Count's corpse, Danilka stuck his hand into a hole in the tree, and he can't get it out. Come along, Uncle. Do be kind and pull his hand out. How was it he put his hand in? What for? He wanted to get a cuckoo's egg out of the hole for me. The day has hardly begun and already you are in trouble. Terenti shook his head. Oh, well, what am I to do with you now? I must come. I must come, little child. Terenti comes out of the kitchen garden and, lifting high his long legs, begins striding down the village street. He walks quickly without stopping. Fiocla can hardly keep up with him. They come out of the village and turn along the dusty road towards the Count's corpse that lies dark blue in the distance. It is about a mile and a half away. The clouds have by now covered the sun. And soon afterwards, there is not a speck of blue left in the sky. It grows dark. The first raindrops, big and heavy, like dark dots on the dusty road. A big drop falls on Fiocla's cheek and glides like a tear down her chin. The rain has begun, mutters the cobbler, kicking up the dust with his bare, bony feet. That's fine, Fiocla, old girl. The grass and the trees are fed by the rain, as we are by bread. And as for the thunder, don't you be frightened. Why should it harm a little thing like you? As soon as the rain begins, the wind drops. The only sound is the patter of rain dropping like fine shots on the young rye and the parched road. We shall get soaked, Fiogla, mutters Terenti. There won't be a dry spot left on us. Ho, ho, my girl, it's run down my neck. But don't be frightened, silly. The grass will be dry again. The earth will be dry again. And we shall be dry again. There is the same sun for us all. A flash of lightning, some fourteen feet long, gleams above their head. There is a loud peal of thunder, and it seems to Fiocla that something big, heavy and round is rolling over the sky and tearing it open, exactly over her head. So children, I'll be sharing a PDF of the same with all of you so that it becomes easier for you all to note it down in your, in your notebook. Okay, the textual answers which needs to be done in the textbook, I would request all of you to complete it in the textbook. You need not write it again in the notebook. And the answers which you need to write in the notebook, I would request all of you to complete it in the notebook. Okay children, now the next reminder is... Uh, there was a deadline given for the subject enrichment activity submission which still few children have not given till now. I would request all of you to kindly submit it by tomorrow so that it can be evaluated. Okay, so children please take care of yourself. Be safe at home. Do not move out of the house until and unless it is not an emergency. Okay, and... 
one more reminder to all the students that whichever videos you are watching all the subjects whether it is maths hindi english sst science or sanskrit and computer i would request all of you to kindly acknowledge your presence by commenting in the comment box which is given in the youtube link okay so take care children be safe at home thank you bye bye